Okay, I think this is good. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Bitch Green Lane YouTube channel. This is episode six of the Yarn Podcast. And uh, it's two weeks since my last episode, which is great. So I'm hoping this one won't be too <laughs> unmanageably long. I have one finished object. I have a couple of new cast-ons. Actually, I have a few more finished objects that I wasn't able to share last month. It's a very, let me back up. A couple finished objects, a few new cast-ons, and just a couple of acquisitions. No yarn was purchased in the last two weeks, but I did get in one of my pre-orders that I did a couple months ago, so that's really exciting. It's a very cloudy, windy day here in New York City, so the sun is really gonna be coming in and out. Unavoidable, but it, the lighting seems okay right now, so we're just gonna go with it. I hope all of you are doing great. I'm doing okay. I'm still on the fence about whether I wanna stay here the whole summer. <sighs> I know I sound like a broken record, but just every day is like, should I stay or should I go? you know and if you can hear that that's my radiator hissing don't ask me why it's going off in the middle of June the water is shut off today in the building which I was not informed of until this morning when I tried to wash my face or whatever I did when I woke up make coffee impossible so today has been a pretty good day I went out and got coffee I got a thousand words done on my novel which has been going great I'm like 10 to 15,000 words away from my first draft being done, which is so incredible. This thing has been, uh, I've been working on it for so many years now and to be this close to finishing my first draft, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to start revising. I already have so many ideas jotted down of things I wanna change in the beginning of the book and I'm just so excited. I think I mentioned in my last podcast that I'm writing a young adult novel and I'm not sharing anything what it's about right now, but it is, it's an idea that I had a long time ago and it's finally coming to fruition. So it's been really fun working on that. But without further ado, let's jump into everything knitting, yarny, crochet, goodness. So my first finished object is my sweetheart rib top, which I'm wearing today under my little over shirt. Um, as you can see, it still turned out really cropped. These are extremely high-waisted pants um, and it just barely reaches the edge, but you can see the sweetheart neckline turned out awesome and I'm really happy with this. I officially had my first experience doing German short rows on this top and I had to rip back the front right side, front the front left side a few times, probably four times. And it was really unfortunate because on the last time I didn't notice which direction I was picking up my stitches. So the first row of my short rows are all twisted knit stitches because I didn't uh, pick them up from the right direction. So that's too bad. It's not noticeable to anyone but me, but that was a bummer. I also didn't quite uh, read the instructions as thoroughly as I should have because instead of knitting up to one stitch before the double stitch if you're familiar with short rows I'm sure everyone does them differently but this pattern in particular said to knit up to one stitch before I knit up to the double stitch so I think it might have just made like more of a pronounced sweetheart shape I'm not really sure how short rows work but I got through them and I'm really proud of myself for doing so. Like I said, I, I had to try about four times before I kind of figured it out, but I, I created, I like shaped the neckline, like it turned out somehow. And uh, I don't know if you can see it like in contrast against my extremely pale skin, but this whole thing just turned out so cute and I've worn it about four times since I finished it last week. I decided to go with the thicker strap option in the pattern and other than that, yeah, I just added about five centimeters to the body, which I could have, I should have added about 10, but I didn't. And I have this much yarn left over, which I actually plan to make socks with because this is one of my favorite yarn colors I've ever used. It's Cabin in the Snow by Barnyard Knits. And uh, yeah, I think I have 
probably not 100 grams, but close to it, left in these two little mini cakes. So that's awesome. Yeah, so that's the yarn. Again, this is a, a Friday Knits pattern, Sweetheart Rib Top. Yeah, I just, after the last podcast, I started cranking it out, and I'm so proud that I got it done and that I nailed short rows for the first time. So that was really exciting. The other thing I was hoping to get done by this episode is my crochet blanket, which let's just take over the whole frame, shall we? <laughs> there she is. I have I used all 10 balls of my yarn, so we're, we're just about there, but I do want a little bit more length, so I had to order some more yarn. And then I didn't think of this when I was filming the last episode, but after I posted it, I was like, oh, duh. I don't need to do tassels or fringe to fix the spots that I missed on the edges. I just need to do a border. I don't know why this didn't cross my mind before, but... So I think I'm either going to do just a single crochet or double crochet border. Maybe a half double crochet border. I don't know how that would look, but I did order the rest of the yarn, but I accidentally ordered it to my home in Mount Vernon. <laughs> I, it was so strange, I was on the hobby website and I had everything in my cart ready to go and then I like had to go find my credit card or something and when I came back the page refreshed and changed my New York address like back to my default address and I just really quick hit submit order and didn't notice until afterwards so I emailed hobby right away but they weren't able to change it because their shipping is so darn quick. So that's on its way to Mount Vernon. So who knows when this blanket will actually get finished. It's so funny because I made it for this apartment and now I'm like still waffling over whether I should go home or not. And the yarn is going to my home. <laughs> so I'm like, this blanket may not actually ever get finished in this apartment. I tell you, when I say New York has chewed me up and spit me out, this is not a big deal, but it's just one of those little things that's adding to all of my stressors here. So that's the other thing I hoped to get done by this episode, but I did not. The couple things that I'm going to throw in video clips of were a two birthday gifts that I... Not crocheted. Gotta get back into knitting mindset. Two birthday gifts that I knit last month. One for my little sister and one for my dad. I knit them each a pair of socks which was really a huge commitment and they didn't get them until about a week, a week after my dad's birthday and two weeks after my sister's birthday. But my sister's socks, I knit with Paisley Knits yarn in Earl Grey Tea. They turned out so cute. I did, I think, actually it might've been a 20 round two by two ribbed cuff and then a simple plain knit vanilla sock and they fit her perfectly. I'm so glad I measured almost every one of my family's feet uh, just like for reference when I started knitting so they would like not expect anything soon but also I would just have it all written down so I had her measurements and then for my dad I used Hugh Loco um, their backyard chicken collection and these yards both had perfect meaning to my family because my little sister's favorite beverage is Earl Grey tea it's like a lifestyle for her not just a drink and uh, um, for my dad, I got this Hugh Loco Backyard Chicken Collection in the color Blue Wheat and Brewster. Because back in the day, my ha my dad um, was like growing his hair out and in between, you know, he'd run his hand through his hair and all of a sudden it's like all really <laughs> tall standing on end. So we used to kind of joke that he his hair looked bird-like. I <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> I hope that's not embarrassing for you. Um, he was a good sport about it and everything. So I just thought that the... The rooster yarn would be a perfect combination for a pair of socks for him and i really liked the colors too like as you can see in the clip they kind of turned out a little bit self-stripey um which i'm not sure you know it's technically not self-striping yarn especially because it's a little it's not precise as self-striping yarn would be but um that's kind of just how they turned out and i think they turned out really cute they fit him perfectly too my sister's sock i did exactly the same sizing thing as my own so it was a 64 stitch uh, circumference on a 2.25 needle 
And then because I'd never made socks for a man before, I was a little worried. I don't know, like men, like ankles and feet are so much like bulk. Are they like a lot bulkier? I don't know. I mean, it really depends on the person, but for my dad, I wanted it to have a little more give or stretch. So I used the 2.5 needle with a 70 round or 70 stitch circumference. Oh, so many numbers. And then for his, I just did an 18. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like running stats at this point. It's so funny to talk about them when they're not here. But I did an 18 round one by one ribbed cuff. And then again, simple vanilla sock with contrast cuff, heel and toe. So those were the other finished um, objects from last month that I wasn't able to talk about. But now that they have their, their birthday socks in hand, I can spill all the fun details so that's everything in that category and now we can move on to my current works in progress the blankets like on hold now since I don't have the yarn and I don't know when I'm gonna get it but my active works in progress we can chat about now the first one again broken record is my uh, <laughs> Olivia and Oliver fibers socks in pixie I think I did a few rounds since the last time we spoke, but that's all I'm going to say about that. This is Olivia and Oliver Fibers yarn in Pixie Dust is the main colorway and Desert Rose is the contrast color. Again, my favorite 2x2 two two ribbed cuff. I swear I'm going to finish these sometime. And really that's, that's all we need to talk about those. So my next... Uh, here we go. Oh yeah, this is exciting. So, my next active work in progress is a ruffle sock. I'm so excited to have cast this on. And I'm using the Drops Nord. Yes, Drops Nord um, yarn. And this is the color Old Pink. It's kind of a nice like muted raspberry shade. And here is the beginning of my ruffle quarter sock. So cute. It turned out exactly how I was imagining. Again, from my last podcast, this is a 128 stitch cast on. And I purled the first row. So it kind of folds over like this. And then I did five knit rounds. And then on the next round, so the seventh round, I knit two together every stitch. So that went down to 64, which is my standard foot circumference stitches. <laughs> I'm just throwing out random words now. <laughs> 64 is my standard amount of stitches for the circumference of a sock. So knitting two together from 128, you can do the math. And then I did, I already forget how many. Luckily, I put my little counters on here, so 10, 20. Two? I'm gonna say 24. I've written all this down in my knitting journal, but it looks like I did 24 rounds and then started the heel. So I'm, I'm excited to try this on. I don't really wanna stick my foot in it right now because I'm afraid of what might happen, but it's turning out so cute. This yarn has been really interesting. It's an alpaca wool and polyester blend, I think, or polyamide, one of the two. And it's it splits really easily, so you really have to pay attention to each stitch. I've had to uh, drop a stitch back like 20 rounds to try and fix something. So that's been a little tedious. And it's also, I don't think it's great for a summer sock. It's It feels very warm and like cozy. And it's also, it's very like stretchy and bouncy. Is that an alpaca thing? I feel like it is. I just got so scared my camera wasn't recording, but it is. So I'm really excited to try like, I guess just my regular wool, wool nylon blend sock thing. Cause I don't know, these just feel a little too like 
like I said, like too cozy, but the color is turning out so cute. I have, I have, I think about an inch, an inch left until I can do the toe and finish this guy up. But if I wasn't working on so many other projects, <laughs> this would be a lot faster of a knit, but I'm very happy with how it's going. This has been my thing that I just like walk around knitting when I go for a walk or sitting at a coffee shop or something. So yeah, I, I'm so happy I finally cast on this ruffle sock. It's turning out so cute. I hope you guys agree. And I will link the kind of guide that I'm following below, but again, it's so simple. Just cast on twice the amount you need, purl a row, knit a few, and then decrease. So that is my ruffle sock. Hopefully I'll get them both done uh, during the month of June, but it's, it's going to be a crazy last couple of weeks of this month, so we shall see. But, and I'm quite sure I'll get a second sock out of this ball because there's still quite a bit left. So that's great. And then my other thing I finally cast on is my Rubus blouse, which I've been talking about for many episodes. And I've got a lavender sachet in my project bag because I'm so worried about bugs in this New York City apartment. So again, this is the Rubus blouse by Refined Knitwear. And I'm using Knitting for Olives Soft Silk Mohair in Dusty Olive. And I'm holding it double, it's so soft. And I've just barely started this one, so you will not be able to tell what it is just by looking at it. But trust me when I say it will be a blouse. Okay. So, here we are. I think we're about seven to nine rows in. And I've started doing both the raglan increases for the sleeve and the lifted increases for the puff sleeve. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. This is my first time doing um, a few of these techniques. So, currently knitting flat. I have no idea how this is going to become what I just said I'm working on. But it's been really fun so far. It's fun learning a new pattern. It's fun doing a pattern from a new designer that I haven't tried before. And, wow, it's like... Yeah, it is becoming a shape. Okay, that's cool. So it's just these very satisfying little stitches, a little mohair yarn held double, and I'm really looking forward to cranking through this when I wrap up a couple of these other things that are still on my needles, but I'm just really glad I cast it on. I was really dragging my feet on it for some reason. I started getting a little intimidated, which is not, I try not to let that happen and just dive right in, but now that I've started, you know, I've read the pattern over a few times, always read the pattern all the way through before you start anything. I know none of us do it with recipes, but do it if you're knitting a pattern. So I know what to expect. We're on our way there. And yeah, it's just been a fun, fun few rows, I guess, cause we're not very far, but I'm excited to see exactly how it comes together but I am just I'm just glad I started it I really am into these um short sleeve or half sleeve tops I think they're really I'm kind of someone who's always like cold slash hot <laughs> can never figure it out so having something that's like cozy fabric but short sleeve I feel like is always perfect for me so I'm really excited about this and I don't know we'll see how much I have done by the next podcast but yeah, I just, I think it's going to be extremely beautiful once it's done. So luckily I haven't had to rip anything back with this yet. Wow, sun. <laughs> um, but I probably just jinxed myself. So I'm holding it, or this project fits, like the, the aesthetic of this project fits so well with my Black Sheep Knitworks project bag. It has these little green leaves and then the green ball of green yarn in here. I want you guys to see it all together. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So 
so nice. So that I've worked on that a couple of nights this week and that's been fun. I think those are all my knitting projects right now. And we're at 22 minutes, that's awesome. So next we'll chit chat about the swatches I made for my upcoming cumulus blouse, which are living on my little desktop bulletin board that I found on Amazon. Um, I'm not promoting Amazon. <laughs> I am against Amazon. I'm deleting my Prime account this year. Another story for another day. I don't want to go off on an Amazon diatribe. So anyway, I will just say, if you're looking for this, I will link it below because I did purchase it on Amazon. Anyway, these are all the swatches that I made over the last couple of weeks. So I'll just start with the one I'm most excited about, which is Cumulus by Fiber Spates Yarn in Early Gray and Natural Held Together which made exactly the color that I thought it would. It's kind of a gray beige in between perfect dreamland. And this is, I think, definitely the color that I want my uh, cumulus blouse to be. I just think it would be so delightful. I just, yeah, as soon as I knit this up, I was like, oh yeah, that's gonna be the color. You can, you can't quite tell with this one that it's marled. It kind of just all melts into the same color because the colors are so similar. But on a swatch like this one, which is ethereal and thistle, they're two extremely different colors. So you can see they make kind of this marled purple, which I love. I knit this because as you can see, <laughs> so bright out, wow. As you can see by my new manicure this week, I'm still obsessed with this lilac shade. So this became a really interesting swatch. I still think it would be a, a gorgeous blouse because it just reminds me of like a hydrangea. Like that kind of always has that little like lavendery blue, but really bright like petal, all those colors in one petal. And I just think it turned out so pretty. I really like the marled effect. The, the only thing that doesn't, I think because the ethereal color is such a cool tone and the thistle is such a warm tone, there's like a slight imbalance to me. But like I said, overall, it reminds me of a hydrangea petal and I do think that it turned out really pretty. Another swatch that I made is this, oh, we'll do this one actually next. This one is in, peach and blush and as you can see the peach was a lot more overpowering than the blush but it still gave a little bit of a marled look so it kind of just looks like like a van not vanilla cream like an orange cream bar to me um so the pink did soften up the peach a little bit but you can kind of see that slightly marled effect with like some pink in here and then some orange in there just kind of depends on which red is in the front when you're knitting it but yeah I do think that one turned out really pretty too being it's like a nice soft kind of apricot color so that is peach fumbling everywhere peach and blush if the cumulus by fiber space yarn and then those are old swatches here is one so this one I I made as you can see I made two swatches in one so below is mithril and sea green which was an accident and then the top one is mithril and water this one was an accident because I was knitting in the dark and I thought that it was water but I had accidentally done sea green so this one also is kind of a cool tone with a warm tone and I'm just like it turned out cool but not really what I was looking for and then on top you can see the gray kind of muted the, the water tone a little bit. Let me get out the ball. So here's water and here's mithril. So these two colors made this top color. So you can kind of see 
the mithril on top here just kind of muted the water a little bit. So it's just a slightly more gray toned blue. And I absolutely love how that worked up. You can see some slight, very slight marling. Can I, is marling a, a verb? Can I say marling? And I just think that one turned out so lovely. So that would be a major plan B color for me if I wanted to. So this is Cumulus by Fiber Spates in water, and this one is Mithro, um, if you're as into that combo as I am. And then another swatch that I did is the mint color, which a few people were really bird which a few people were really excited about in the last podcast it's a very beautiful color and so I experimented holding the mint with natural and with sea green so the sea green made I don't that's just pretty it's a bit darker in person there's more blue in person but that's how those two turned out it's a little bit marled. You can see some blue and some green. And then I decided to try it with natural just to kind of lighten it up. And to me this like looks like grasshopper pie. Like it's a little bit like vanilla natural cream and a little bit of the mint. And so I actually do really like how the mint worked up with the natural. It's a little like, what's the word? I don't know, but it just kind of brightened it up a lot. And so to me, this swatch is like very pleasing to look at. I just think it's so nice. And you can see the, the mint is really toned down, held together with that natural shade. So that one was a fun one too. And I feel like there's, is there one more? No, I think that's all. So yeah, these are, oh, I just threw my th thumbtack on the floor. That's going to need to be fixed. So here's all my little swatches that I made. It w I had so much fun knitting these up. I was just turned on How I Met Your Mother and made like four of these in one night. <laughs> and uh, this one turned out huge. So I was like, uh, we're not doing that again. So the rest turned out a lot smaller, but I got, I really enhanced my swatching skills because I remembered to purl the first row and the first two, uh, first two and last two stitches on each side to kind of stop it from rolling up into itself. So if you would like to, let me know your favorite color combination out of those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven color combinations. Um, or if there's more that you want to see swatched in case you guys are curious and want to do kind of a custom hold together colorway cumulus blast like I'm doing, um, I did a haul with all the uh, showing all the colors that I bought in my last podcast, so you can check that out if you so desire. And I think next we can chat about acquisitions, which is very small. So my acquisitions were my picks from a recent Sorella yarn collection, which was called Knitflix, and I just got a few skeins of yarn to make socks out of, but. Again, those shipped to my home in Mount Vernon. And, oh, I have one more acquisition. Don't let me forget, Chelsea, <laughs> self. Um, so those again shipped to my home in Mount Vernon. I had my mom mail them out to me. And uh, so I got them in a really nice care package from her. The first one is The Shop Around the Corner, which is a reference to You've Got Mail, which is just about my favorite movie of all time and one of the main reasons why I decided to summer in New York City. So here it is, I got it in nylon sock, which is 80% merino wool, 20% nylon, superwash merino wool, and it's about 400 yards. And their fingering weight is categorized as number one. I always thought fingering was number two, but I think I might be wrong, so feel free to shout at me in the comments. But it's this really amazing, faded, 90s, nostalgic color combo with some beige, some like really, really hazy light pinks in here. So you can see on this top one, it's a little pinkish. Here's a little beige-ish and then some deeper navies. So these, as they were knit up, shown on, on Instagram, 
it was kind of a one row stripe repeat if I remember correctly. So this will be interesting to see how it knits up because it's just so beautiful in skein form. I don't actually know when I'm going to get around to making these, but I was so happy to finally get this after months and months of being excited about it. I really wanted to knit a pair of You've Got Mail socks while on the Upper West Side and watching You've Got Mail. I don't know that that dream will come to fruition, but just because I don't know if I have time, um, depending on my schedule for the next couple months. But I was just so excited to get this. We've been waiting for it for so long to finally have it in my life. I don't know if you guys feel that way about like pre-orders, but I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Okay, the next one I picked out from the Netflix collection is called Coffee, which I obviously had to buy for reasons I do not need to explain. <laughs> and I just love this kind of creamy latte color with the deeper kind of looks like ground coffee beans, you know, or like this cup of just pure black coffee. <sighs> I can almost smell coffee just looking at this yarn. It's so nice. Um, but this is based on the show Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, which is Jerry Seinfeld's show. And he lives like 20 blocks south of me. <laughs> and my friends have seen him, I think, twice walking around. So how cool would it be if I was knitting Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee socks ran into Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, which is kind of what I hope happens with this next yarn. So I got uh, the Millennial color in Classic DK, which... If you look at this, you can tell it's not really my normal <laughs> color palette. And I got this because... Cloudy... <laughs> Sutton Foster and I follow each other on... In okay, back up a little bit. Millennial is inspired by the TV show Younger with Sutton Foster and Hilary Duff. Sutton Foster and I follow each other on Instagram, which makes me have a pseudo belief that we are sort of internet friends <laughs> and while I'm in New York City I'm planning to go see her in the music van so I thought it would be cute to get her a skein of yarn and see if I can give it to her at some point this summer wouldn't that be cute I know it's a little bit of a far reach but <sighs> I really want her to sign my book the book that changed my life the book I've talked about in previous podcasts and I just figured if she's signing my book, she deserves a little something of her own. So I really want to try and get this Sorelli yarn to her in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, the color is called Millennial. And I got the Classic DK, which is 100% super washable, 231 yards. Um, so she mainly crochets, but I figured this would make, make something, you know. Or she can just keep it in hang form for, I, if she even gets it, you know. So we'll see, but... Yeah, so this one, you can see, does not fit in with my, like, neutral, dreamy scheme. But that's because I didn't really get it for myself. So, that would be fun. We'll see if it happens. But, so, those are my picks from the Netflix collection. Um, I also got the cozy cable knit mug that they were selling, which I think is available now or pre-order and I really love the mug it's really unfortunate that it's not microwave or dishwasher friendly but it does it has a loose leaf tea uh, component to it so that's kind of why I got it and then I just remembered I also got um, long dog yarns may club colorway <laughs> sorry I had to think through an enormous post office saga I went through to get it um, I got, finally, Long Dog Yarns May colorway for the Lord of the Rings Yarn Club. So, I know it's halfway into June, but if you subscribe and have not seen... No, you know what? She already posted the color, so I'm just going to show the May colorway for the Lord of the Rings Yarn Club. One club to rule them all. It is called the White Wizard. It's the first colorway in the Two Towers series which is my favorite Lord of the Rings movie. And I got this one in Bounce Sock, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 463 yards. Yeah, so this is based on the scene where Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli run into Gandalf 
in the forest and they're all like blinded by his pure white holy robes or whatever happens but it turned out very beautiful i think this will make a very delicate dreamy pair of socks again i'm not gonna unwind any of these until i have the whole collection in my possession so it will be so cool to see all these together i can't wait we're almost halfway through the year so i can't wait to see what she has cooked up for june but again this is called the white wizard and all of the Lord of the Rings colorways will be available next year from Long Dog Yarn. So if you are not part of the club or missing out, you will have a chance to buy them all next year. And that is all for this episode. I think I've been filming for about 40 minutes, so I'll probably have a few ums to cut out. <laughs> but I think we're coming in at a good amount of time. So let's see, what do we have in store for next episode? Two weeks felt both like a good amount of time and a little fast for recording, but my next episode might be in the first week or two of July because, again, it's going to be a crazy few weeks ahead. A, next week I'm going to Connecticut, which will be really exciting. I'm trying to spend most of my time writing as opposed to most of my time knitting, so I'm not sure that I'll be able to knit six to eight hours a day like I usually do, which is a good thing because I'm being disciplined, I'm disciplining myself. And it will be good for my fingers and wrists to get a little, a little breather. But I'm going to Connecticut next week for a few days and then my sister's coming to visit at the end of this month, which is kind of when I need to decide uh, if I'm gonna be driving home at the end of June or staying here for another month or two wild so i'll probably chat with you all in another two three weeks or so in the meantime we can chat on instagram i love dming with everyone about projects that they're working on or incredible yarn that they purchased or anything else having to do with the fiber arts if you want to leave a comment and let me know what you were working on while doing while watching this video that would be great i love hearing what you all are working on and getting inspired for my new projects and the other thing that's so crazy is that i'm getting so close to 1000 subscribers speechless totally speechless the rays of the sun came down as i spoke those words so thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed and watched my videos one of them has like over 3000 views which boggles my mind. I'm so happy we can be on this knitting journey together, just knitting and purling and crocheting the days away. So I hope you all are doing great, having a fun summer and staying very safe wherever you are. And I will see you in the next video.